Hi guys and welcome to all my novel ideas. This is Sharon. So today we're going to be doing my September recap, I guess, where I'm going to be back planning the monthly in my home to make it decorative like this. And I'm also going to do a flip of all of my daily pages from September that I did. I basically completed all of September. Um, I think there's one empty page, which is fine. Some months there's more than others. Sometimes there's a lot of empty pages. <laughs> but yeah. So I'll first start by completing the monthly in here. So what I normally do is I use the monthly not that frequently. It's used like during the time of September, but all forward planning happens in Google Calendar. And then during the week, some things can occur. So basically to complete September monthly, I just need to go through, look at events that I have written down on my weeks. And if that event to me is worth remembering, I move it to the monthly to help when I back plan in my home. So these are just colored dots uh, that I slight that I cut in half, and I use the half, like the crescent and the half circle, on my monthly to mark events. And then on each calendar, I put holidays and birthdays in one of my yearly colors, which is the Sarafsa Dry Vintage in Camel Yellow. And any events are just written in whatever fountain pen ink of the time I have.
Okay, and that's it for putting all the events that I'd want to remember onto my calendar. I should say these I bought in a roll on Amazon a number of years ago. It came with like a six pack of all of them. It was around the time when cloth and paper was getting really big with like their colored dots. Um, so I bought it, I think it was like maybe 20 bucks or so at the time. And then I just cut them into smaller manageable sheets. And I essentially have picked a colorway per year because I did that in 2022. I picked this colorway for 2023 and then I've picked another colorway for 2024. And I like them for marking on the calendar and then also for marking events during the week. Okay, we'll move into my home now. I'm going to start by decorating September's monthly. If you want to just see the flip of my spreads from September, I will put the timestamp to jump forward to on the screen. This next portion I'm going to fast uh, speed up as I do it just because sometimes it can take me a while to do a spread but if you're curious for how long it took I will put the time listed in the description. So before I start these are the washi tapes I chose to use. All of them are simply gilded. These are the stickers that we will be using that decided the theme. I thought that was pretty. I don't know if I'll be using it as a full box. <laughs> we'll see. And then September's color was 992. So that's what I'm going to be using at the top for the days of the week and then the side. The writing on the side. If you haven't seen how I do my months, they usually end up looking like something like this. Okay, so if you want to stick around and decorate with me, enjoy! For anyone curious, I am drinking orange pico and my snack is arrowroot cookies. The ones with the baby on them. I like them. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get started. Hello and welcome to the voiceover. So the first thing I always do when I decorate my monthlies is I color in the days of the week with my monthly color. I think it just kind of gives an accent color for the month and ties everything together. I also use my monthly color as an identifier for notes pages throughout my dailies in my home and then it's obviously used in my weeks too. I don't think it's necessary to have like the color coordination go that far but it makes me happy so I do it like that. The other thing I do when I'm prepping out my month is I like to block out all of the days from the preceding and succeeding months uh, with washi tape just as a added decorative thing and then I just like how it looks. <laughs> so I'm starting with this washi which is like I want to say it was called Falling Stars or something by Simply Gilded and then using a ribbon washi. My color scheme was basically muted neutrals and then copper was kind of like the metallic uh, copper was the metallic like accent that all of the stickers seem to share. I 
have you guys been doing? I know I haven't posted in a while. Just didn't have the creative juices going. I haven't really decorated much of October for my home. Sometimes you just kind of get in a slump like that. I essentially, I did a, a music spread in September that I was really proud of, and then I painted, uh, if you're into musicals, which I am, Phantom of the Opera closed this year on Broadway back in April, and I wanted to like remember that in my planner just because, I mean, it matters to me. And so I hand, not hand painted, I drew it and then like watercolored in the playbill and I was really proud of it and I haven't done anything in my home since because clearly I was like nothing's gonna live up to that. <laughs> Sorry if I sound a little bit ill, I just think it's a common cold. So I write the short form of the month out in my monthly color and then I hand write over top. As you can see, I'm going to mess up the spelling of September and put a line through the B instead of the T. So I just correct that with some white out and then once the ink dries from the Sarasa, I color over the white out a bit to make it look like September. It's annoying but I can't do anything to fix it so it is what it is. I also like to block out long stretches of time with the monthly color, so this is just denoting when family members of mine were on trips or away. So this is a sticker. Uh, from Simply Gilded years ago and I thought it would be cool to use it like I have a bunch of time when there ha I had nothing to denote on day so it's like let's put a full box in um, it's too tall I will notice that after I go to put it down and this sticker paper does not lend itself to being removed from Tomoe River paper all that easily so it does call me it does cause me a bit of a problem. So I decided to just cut it short. I'm eyeballing it. It would probably be more beneficial if I actually measured, but I don't take it that seriously. <laughs> I'm going to try my best to line it up, and it looks pretty good, but I do mess up on the box on the left-hand page when I put it down. Uh, but you can't do anything about it now, so it is what it is. As you can see, the struggle is pretty real. <laughs> 
but I do think the paper underneath begins to tear, so I end up just deciding to leave it. You can't fix things like that, so I don't worry about it. I would also would have cut this one more had I realized that it was going to go over the line, but that's okay. Now I'm just counting out the days that I need to put decorative uh, triangles on to indicate there was an event. And I kind of just like mishmash go with the flow when I pick which ones to use what box on. How have you guys been doing? Hope everyone's good. Uh, if you celebrate Diwali, happy Diwali, that was just yesterday when I'm- or happy belated Diwali I guess. That was yesterday when I'm filming this. If not, what's the next holiday? I guess if you're American, uh, your Thanksgiving is coming up shortly. So some of you are probably excited for that. Canadians, we already had it last month. Our next holiday would be Christmas? But, you know, the holiday season's here, I guess. Oh, well, I don't know, it's not quite here yet for me, but <laughs> I know some people are probably starting to decorate. There's houses in my neighborhood that already have Christmas lights up, and I'm like, hmm, it's a bit too early for me personally. But I'm sure within, by the end of next week, I'll be like, yeah, okay, it's time to it's time to start getting in the festive season. When do you start your holiday prep? Do you do it like immediately after Halloween ends? Are you a... Uh, it has to be after Remembrance Day? Do you celebrate any holidays? Maybe you don't. That's cool. I guess if you're a music fan, Taylor Swift's re-release of 1989 came out two weeks ago. If you're a, a Swifty, uh, did you like it? My sister's one. She was of the opinion that she was going to keep listening to the OGs and just add the vault tracks to her playlist. For me... I only like two of the vault songs, and I, the rest I was kind of like, eh. And the two I liked was uh, Say Don't Go, which to me, like, really, f I can't believe that wasn't released back then, because it really does fit on the album. And then the other one is Is It Over Now, which I don't believe she wrote back then, because, like, she talks about, um, she talks about some things that she doesn't mention until uh, the Miss Americana documentary. And I just don't think the Taylor Swift of 2014 would have been comfortable saying certain things to the public. But I do like Is It Over Now. I think it's a nice kind of reflection on the time frame, even though it doesn't feel like it was written for 1989. The rest of them to me are just meh. Sorry. <laughs> and then I also think, like, I was, like, high-key offended for what they did to How You Get the Girl and New Romantics. But I heard they did update style and shake it off, I think, on Spotify. Like, the mixing. It just, all of the mixing on this album sounded really tinny and hollow to me. Like, they really didn't use reverb. It just didn't live up to the original 1989 for me, personally. But I know some people really liked it, so that's good. 
I was actually thinking of making a video on it, like maybe going over my thoughts from the first day to like a month later. But I don't know if anyone would be interested in that. And then I think about like, does it matter if anyone's interested? It'd be fun for me because I always write like retrospectives like that. I just don't know if it would be weird putting it on this channel or not. But a lot of the things like... I'm using this channel as kind of a way to document like my just daily life and like how I I don't really have anyone to talk to in part my personal life about uh, planners and journaling and stuff and I do spend a lot of time making them nice and I kind of just want to like share it even if it's only a couple of people because you know I'm sure someone out there like even if they don't get inspiration or just I, know, I just enjoy watching people like do art and watching people plan is just kind of fun to me so I did like that but then at the same time I was like would it be weird to put things that aren't planner related on this channel and I can't decide letting you know that I switched my drink there from tea to Canada dry ginger ale. My favorite ginger ale. <laughs> but yeah, so I I did I might release a video on 1989. I don't expect really anyone to watch it, but I kind of just I don't know, I I like making things like that for myself. And I figure if I like it, someone else out there probably will too. Because I, what I really miss about YouTube is how random people's channels used to be. Like, a lot of people have dedicated channels now to a certain niche. And I think that's really cool. But I'm, like, I, I have channels I follow that do, like, the planner and journal stuff. And, you know, they're, like, uh, quote-unquote experts in their field, right? I'm definitely never going to be that because I'm just not as, I'm not consistent always in my planners and journals. Like I haven't planned in my weeks in three weeks now. I'm going to do it after this uh, voiceover to get back out of the slump. I, I have no shame saying that I go through slumps like that, but I just can't be like a completely dedicated channel because my, my, hyper focus interest like is constantly changing between things so if you listen to this just really long ramble let me know what you think uh if not i can always i guess make a different channel and put those on because it really doesn't bother me but if you wouldn't be interested in anything like that and you'd rather just keep this as journaling related stuff then uh let me know if not i'm I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> and then after the week after Taylor Swift released 1989, if your army, uh, Golden by Jungkook came out. And I loved it. I see some, I, I've seen uh, naysayers. There's always naysayers, right? Like, like, for all of my complaints about 1989, um, I was a big fan of it when it came out in 2014. It was, like, the album I played the most in November of that year. And I think all of a lot of my complaints with 1989 stem from the fact that I was such a big fan of the original. So, like, 
I'm not one of the naysayers who didn't think it deserved praise back in the day or didn't like it back in the day. I'm like, I've always liked it. It hasn't aged as well for me just because I think she's released better albums since, but I still like really like 1989. Uh, I did not care for as much for the TV edition, but that was the first like TV edition I didn't like as much, I'd say. But with Golden by Jungkook, there was a naysayers being like, it's generic. And I always, that makes me laugh because I'm like, generic doesn't equal bad, but also pop music is always called generic. And I don't think there's anything wrong with something just being for fun. Like I think about the different books I read and they're not all intellectual. Sometimes it's literally the same plot rehashed by different authors. Isn't that generic? And yet we give things like that praise. So all of that to say, I loved Golden. To me, it's kind of like a going through the history of pop music because it's so you can clearly pinpoint all the different inspirations from different time frames. Like, oh, there's a song that sounds like the 1970s, 1980s. Oh, now there's a song that's like the early 2000s. Here's a song that's like the weekend disc from like 2019. And I think just because I'm like a really late millennial, early Gen Z, it hits like all of those uh, nostalgia points for me that like are all of my favorite times of pop. So I loved it. I think his vocal performance on it was amazing too. He performed in Times Square on Thursday? Yeah. Which was so cool. Shout out to the army who was like, they're cleaning the billboard. I think he's going to per- perform there. And I was just following it on Twitter all day being like, is he, is he going to perform there? And then of course they were right. And then after that, I watched Yet to Come because that premiered made me cry I had forgotten that they like edited the ending meant oh I guess if you're not army yet to come was uh (laughs) how to explain it so if you're not army uh South Korea put a bid up to hold world expo in Busan in 2030 last year i guess the voting for that is like this month and to help with their bid to get the world expo they asked bts to perform so they had a concert last year uh, october 2022 in busan for free for like fifty thousand fans and it was live streamed to like (laughs) well i think like 48 million people uh but not all of us got to watch it because it kept crashing. (laughs) So then they released it into theaters uh, in January of this year. I think I've watched it multiple times, like the live stream version, but I forgot that they edited in the like film version of it, they edited the ending mentions to flow a different way so that it ends on the two encore songs. And the way they edit it is just makes it like so much more emotional to me. So I was crying. It really hit me in the feels. I was like, oh, yep, I really miss Jin and Hobie and Yoongi. It was just, yeah. But wow, just like, can you imagine two free concerts in one day? So good. My sister just texted me asking if I make, if I could make Rice Krispies again for Christmas. I made this Rice Krispie like recipe in the summer once and it became like this big hit with my family. I was completely unexpected because it's just like adding like vanilla and adding like additional butter and, uh, well not butter because I can't eat butter. It was like a vegan version. I guess they call that 
a vegan block and then like extra marshmallow so it's like super gooey she's now the second person in my family to be like can you make rice krispies at christmas time so i'm definitely doing it because i want them to <laughs> but yeah if i look back on the screen um so i put going back to planning sorry all that long-windedness I hope you don't mind. I just enjoy talking about my interests and I really, I, oh, I never finished my thought about YouTube before. I was going to say I miss when YouTubers did like random things because I just really enjoy watching people be passionate about things they like. And like I watched a whole video some point earlier this year, I think it was like 40 minutes about someone just explaining to me all the different generations of Tamagotchis because they were like, I think they were called Tamo heads or something. Just because they were, he was, they were in the field of like collecting Tamagotchis and like they had opinions on what were their favorites. And I just really enjoy videos where people just kind of talk about things they like. There's something so human about it. And that's why I wanted to make some videos like that too because I think it's a good way to get to know people and then I think it it's just something you can relate to and I figure I can't be the only person who enjoys watching people be passionate about things they love so I'm putting I would be putting it out there for people like that uh yeah but if we go back to the actual journaling which is probably what you clicked on this video for I put decals on all of the decorative triangles that are related to the day, uh, like the event. And then when I'm writing out my events, I use my accent color, the Tombow 992. And I kind of just vary my, my script between like printing, handwriting, and then like decorative printing that I call it, which is kind of when I use like a mixture of uppercase and lowercase and they're bouncy I call it being bouncy letters And now I'm just adding finishing touches where I've cut out a quote from a quote box. I cut out that acorn and I'm going to be cutting, uh, fussy cutting some of the bows from the Simply Gilded Washi just to add a little oomph. It can be really annoying to fussy cut washi because it's like doesn't hold its shape and it's so sticky so it'll just kind of curl and you're like I'm trying to cut you. And then a finishing touch is I decided to add those Polaroids. I just thought they were cute and kind of they're like, oh, memories. And now we're done. Okay, so this is our completed back planned monthly in the theme of woodland creatures. 
I'm now going to do a flip of all of my September spreads in my A6. And that's it. That was my September recap. Did you complete all of your monthly pages? I don't normally have this full, but I was pretty impressed that only one day was empty for this month. As you can see, I use my daily pages very randomly. It's like media consumption, notes that I want to hold on to, and creative mediums. Thanks for watching. I hope you had a good day, good night, good evening, and a good week. Hope to see you soon. Talk to you later. Bye.